Michigan, Washington, 7.30 Eastern NRG Stadium in H-Town. We will be in attendance for this game. It's going to be a movie now. Michigan favored by four and a half points. This is for all the five-hour energies. Michigan is on the doorstep of everything they have worked for. Since Confetti dropped in that game against TCU for the wrong reasons on Michigan, they have been dreaming about this. They've been salivating for this. This is what you broke it down on during winter conditioning with probably national championship or bust. That's the kind of feel for this team. It's built to a moment like this, and they have earned it. They've earned it. Not just from what they've done on the field, from what they've had to endure off the field. Having to block out all the external noise. That can do two things. It can tear you apart and cause you to question yourself, question your system, question your leadership. Or, in Michigan's case, it causes you to lock arms, be stronger together, be a bunch of brothers in the foxhole, and find a way to get it done. And that's why they're in Houston. So for Michigan, man, they've, they've built to this. They have not skipped any steps. Built to a New Year's Six team under Jim Harbaugh. Then it was beat Ohio State. They did that, win the Big Ten along with it. And now they've gotten over the hump of winning that college football playoff semifinal game with a chance to win the whole shebang in Houston. So if I'm Michigan, all the pressure's on Michigan. And for that exact reason, I think that's why Washington is extra dangerous in this spot. All the pressure's on Michigan. None of the pressure, quite frankly, is on Washington. They've been counted out all year long. Y'all, I- I'm a part of that. I have picked against Washington all games but one game. Are we going to do it again here? I'll give you our pick here in a second. But like they should feel all the freedom and all the just joy in the world for being in this game, for being in this spot. There's no pressure on them. Nobody had Washington in the preseason as their national champion. They get to go out there and play ball. They get to go out there and play pressure-free and have a chance to spoil it for a team like Michigan, who, again, has the weight of the world, I believe, on their shoulders and expectations to win a national title. That's why a lot of these guys came back. That's not to say Washington didn't have high expectations for this season, but from the external noise, there wasn't a lot of that around Washington. It was all internal, all self-belief. They've been counted out all year long. What's one more time? That's probably the attitude that Washington's taking. Make sure you're subscribed right here. College football, only college football all year round. Like I said, we will be in attendance for this national title game. Want y'all to stay dialed into this channel because we'll have content all along the weekend, all up and through the game. Want y'all dialed in here, so make sure you subscribe. That's first. Second, follow me on Twitter and on Instagram at JD Pakel for content that we don't actually do on this channel, but do on those social channels. So appreciate y'all for that. Now, here's one of the big questions in this game for me, man. Can Michigan impact Michael Penix Jr. without bringing extra numbers? Because we saw it against Alabama. They were, I mean, they were just savant-like in how they drew that game plan up. It was twists. It was stunts from the defensive line. They brought a linebacker occasionally, but they were able to get after Jalen Milrow to the tune of six sacks because they were able to consistently impact him and because they were able to consistently confuse the offensive line with having to pass off those different stunts. And if you're able to get after him with four or five players, the real advantage there is on the back end. Because if you're Michigan, what concerns you is the fact that they're one of the best deep passing teams in the country is Washington. They got the Monstars over there. McMillan, Roma Dunze is a creative player. He's having a road to glory kind of season. Jalen Polk, like they, they got some dudes now. And so if you can get after him and affect him with four, one, you speed the shot clock up. That's first. Second, you get more resources to account to their freak shows in that wide receiver room. You can give them more attention that, quite frankly, they deserve. So that's going to be big. If you can impact him, speed up the shot clock, maybe you force some errant throws. Maybe that narrow path that they like to walk throwing the ball deep isn't quite as reliable as it has been throughout the course of the year. But if you can't, man, like, if you have to bring extra to a, to impact Michael Penix Jr., I'll just say this. like I've seen a lot of teams now, Oregon and Texas, try and bring guys from the third level or, or try and bring another guy from somewhere else on the field to try and blitz him like he just he finds it he does I, I don't know what else to say like when, when you bring pressure it usually does not work out well for your defense if you have to bring extra resources from somewhere deeper within that defense so if you have to manufacture pressure another way I don't think that favors Michigan and if you don't impact him at all 
It's going to be a long day regardless. He'll go for four bills like he did against Texas. Will Johnson and Roma Dunze is going to be box office, dude. Two NFL caliber players, two guys that are arguably the best at their position. Watch that battle all day long because Roma Dunze is the go-to guy for Michael Penix Jr. As good as that wide receiver room is, they want to get it to number one. If they're able to disrupt that a little bit, maybe throw them off the rhythm, things could get more interesting. Anytime you don't have your fastball in a game like this, obviously that would be advantage Michigan. But if he takes over, that could just be the way that this game goes because I think he is good enough to take over if they don't cover him accordingly, if they don't give him the right attention. Now, the pace early in this game is going to be huge, man. Washington with a lead, just quite frankly, is going to be different than playing against Bama with a lead because Bama with a lead, their run game scared you. Jalen Milrow scared you. Washington can score in two plays. Washington can score in one play. If you get down 13 to them, if you get down 10 to them, Michigan, we said it against Alabama, they're not built to chase. Now, good thing for Michigan, they never got down by as much as that against Alabama, and that was why they ended up winning that football game. But like, we, we got to make sure we watch this very, very closely for Michigan. Weathering that first couple punches from Washington is going to decide the outcome of the game. I wholeheartedly believe that. Washington goes up 14-0 early. I, I love J.J. McCarthy. I love Colston Loveland. This offense, schematically, is not built to try and come back and chase a Ferrari like this Washington offense. It's just not. Michigan will have the very best game plan possible for this game. They will. The Rose Bowl is tremendous evidence of that. You don't have a month to prepare, but I promise you, like, Jesse Minter, he's a... Uh, He's been prepping for this one for a while. Like they, they knew that if they drew Washington or Texas, they would have their work cut out for them in the pass game, defending the pass game, that is. They're ready for this one. Washington, those linebackers will have to trigger and connect. And what I mean by that is, we've said this about Washington in different games. Those linebackers, man, they get their read right away and they trigger quickly. They, they, they see ball, get ball. They're not asking questions or asking for directions. They're going to attack your running back. And Michigan is a downhill running football team. Heavy dose of Blake Corum, heavy dose of Donovan Edwards. That's how they're going to get down. That's how they're going to live. Probably sprinkling some J.J. McCarthy on there for good measure, but that's pretty much going to be what they do. So the thing with triggering quickly helps create negative plays. That's what Washington wants to create, which would force Michigan to throw the football more than they would like. That's first. But if you swing big, there's also the potential for you to miss big. And if you miss big, there's not going to be a ton of guys behind you that can make a tackle in the open field against Blake Corner. If you do, it's probably after he gets a first down. So notice early how Washington triggers and is able to impact the backfield of Michigan. If they can do that, it forces Michigan out of their game plan. It forces them to be more of a throwing the football kind of team. Not saying Michigan can't still do that, but that would be the kind of style you'd like to force them to have to play if you're Washington. I'll say this again. We said it earlier in the show. Roma Dunze and this wide receiver core is what Steph Curry is to the Golden State Warriors. If he's on, he's on. It, it might just kind of be that kind of style of game. Like we said this throughout the course of the season for Washington. Like I don't know there's been a game where I like them going into it on the line of scrimmage. And guess what? It hasn't mattered. Because when you're as good as they are on the perimeter, when you're as good as they are at quarterback with Michael Penix Jr., just pretty much placing the ball wherever he wants on those vertical passes, that is the great equalizer. That changes the kind of game that you have to play. And so, yes, I think Michigan will do a great job twisting and stunting and trying to apply pressure. But you watch Michael Penix Jr., man, and that offense, there's not a whole lot of contemplating back there in the pocket. There's a reason he has one of the lowest sack rates in the country. Yes, his offensive line won the Joe Moore Award. I don't want to dismiss that. But this thing is built for him to have answers and answers quickly. And he diagnoses it quickly. And deals the pill like a shady pharmacist as good, if not better, than anybody else in the entire country. Had to get a shady pharmacist re reference in there for our boy Michael Penix Jr. Like a fired CVS employee is kind of the shady pharmacist he's dealing with when you watch them play quarterback. So listen, man. We picked against both these teams in the college football playoff semifinals. So we, we got uh, the good folks from both fan base saying pick against us. We picked against Michigan one time this year. One time. That was this past week. We were wrong. We've picked against Washington all but once this year. 
and that was the USC game. We nailed that, but other than that, Washington has pretty much been a wagon, and we've seen them be that. The mismatch is still the mismatch as it has been for Washington against Oregon, against Texas, against Oregon State, against Utah. The line of scrimmage for Michigan will be superior to Washington. The problem is, I don't think Washington is going to make it a line of scrimmage kind of game. If they have to downshift a little bit, I think they're going to be able to do that. Michael Penix Jr. showed the legs off a little bit in that game against Texas. He can scoot if he needs to. Doesn't, doesn't want to do it all the time, but he can if he needs to. I don't know if Dylan Johnson's going to be at a certain percentage in this game. We're recording this, or, or live right now, rather, the morning after their semifinal game, so hopefully get, get more information there. This is a tough one. This could legitimately go either way. And I'm not just saying that to say that and kind of leave you in suspense. Like, legitimately, I could see this thing going towards Michigan or towards Washington. I see a path to victory for both. And the path to victory for Michigan, again, I think is wider. It has been wider for the opposition against Washington multiple times this year. But what I saw last night from Washington, when they're on in that wide receiver core and the amount of answers they have in that wide receiver core, even if you limit Roma Dunze, you got two other cats that are going to be making plays on Sundays and Michael Penix Jr., who is absolutely going to be making plays on Sundays this time next year. So, with that being said, we're rolling with the dogs. I think it's close. I think it's cinematic. I think Washington gets it done. Final score, 27-24. to 24. Their ninth one-score victory of the season for Washington. The confetti drops on the folks in Seattle and in the folks in Houston that are enjoying a national championship for Washington as they say deuces to the Pac-12. This is an all-Big Ten matchup. And what a statement for Kalen DeBoer. Just like, let's be real here. You're not supposed to win the national title in a place like Washington. You're not. You're not supposed to win the conference at a place like Washington. It was supposed to be Oregon this year. It was supposed to be USC this year. And for Washington to have the year they did and to never flinch in the face of one-score games. It could be played in the 20s. It could be played in the teens. The game they had against Arizona State was like 15-7 to was the final score. I just think their steady heart rate, steady hand is going to be the difference yet again. And I think that the perimeter play ends up being the differentiating factor. I think Washington wins the national championship. Hey, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe to the channel here to make sure you don't miss an episode of The Hard Count. Also, be sure to check out other videos on the On3 YouTube channel.